Hello, I'm Orl, and welcome to Speaking of Everything. I have a very interesting guest in the program. I'm always there at this once a year, Mr. Emilia Calamir. How are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> it's good to have you back, man. Good to be back. A long time, indeed. But that, you, you change your, your hairstyle. Though. Well, I'm, I'm trying to compete with some of the ladies. You know, some ladies are always changing their hairstyle. Oh. So I'm trying a little thing. Oh, okay. That's great. <laughs> so, um... I was expecting the last election that you would be running with some party, man. What happened? No, I would. It wouldn't be fair for me to do that. You know, um, um, people who know me already know that um, I have plans to eventually migrate somewhere else, and so it won't be fair for me to go on a list because I done. I got come to the conclusion that you know change is not going to really happen. Yeah. So uh, because I come to that conclusion, you know, why go in and try to change something that can't be changed? I don't want to be changed. But you know, I feel like that, but. There's this feeling inside of me too that maybe it will change, but Samaritan politics is basically tribal, mm -hmm. and there are a number of families involved that control and manipulate things. And maybe you're right, you know. Maybe not in my lifetime. Yeah. I hope it will change. Yeah. 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 Well, not in my lifetime. I don't think not, maybe my 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 daughter's lifetime. Uh -huh. But I always look at the the one of the guys who said you can either have democracy mm. or you can have well concentrated in the hands of a few, but you can't have both. And so if you can't have both because they are mutually mm. exclusive, yeah, then you, you either have democracy or the other. Right. And I don't see democracy playing out. I'm seeing the other aspect playing out. That's that's true. You know. You know, I I, I sent you a message and said you look. Know, and you have some time you want to come and talk. I was watching this show on the the coming reverse market crash, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the guy was also saying only the paranoid. <laughs> 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 you know, no, he mean that in a very good way. Yeah. Not, not, yeah. you no, know, people when they hear paranoid, connotatively, it's, it has a negative connotation yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, I think yeah. in economics it's different. Yeah, you see, especially in these times, Orwell, you have situations where when people say one thing, they actually mean the opposite, huh? Right. You know, and uh, it's good that you brought up the, the reverse um, crash. It's basically like a sugar rush. You know, a sugar rush meaning that, you know, you, you take all that sugar, you get a high, mm -hmm. right? And then you get a crash after because you can't maintain that high forever. Right. You know, so a market crash means because of panic, people are going to start seeing prices going up. And then let's say, for example, you have um, by the supermarket. You're hearing that a uh, can, uh, can of milk or whatever, right. the price is going to go through the roof. So what are you going to do? You're going to try to rush now to go buy up a bunch of them. Remember in, in the COVID times, people was buying up toilet paper. Right. That was a big issue. So now you're rushing to buy it now, but as you keep rushing, the demand gets higher, and the mm -hmm. price is going higher and higher and higher, and then it feeds off itself. So then it keeps going higher and higher. But at some point, it reaches a point where the, it reaches to maybe, let's say, a thousand percent, and most people can't afford that at that point, and that's when you get the reverse. Mm. So uh, a reverse is just basically a, like, like a sugar rush, you, can, you know, yeah. basically like a sugar rush. No, it's amazing because 2008, a lot of people didn't see it coming. No. And then at the same time, when I speak with people now, they said, yesterday I was speaking to someone in, in, in Georgia, they said to me, mm. yeah, but they're talking about uh, all kinds of things, inflation, and they're talking about there's going to be a crash, but uh, nothing's going to happen. And I was like, wow. <laughs> you see, um, we humans have something called recency bias. Mm. Now, the word recent, meaning that we only could see as far as our nose. So because it's, it's so recent, we don't always look at past. What, so what I had to do to avoid that is go back in history and look at the, the trends happening in history, and you see a similar pattern over and over and over again. The reason why the crash didn't happen already is because, like I said, as the crash is coming, who pumps money into the economy? The Federal Reserve. Right. So what they do is like a drug addict. When a drug addict gets low, uh, to put him on that high again, because remember, George, I was looking for a high. So when he gets that prick now, he gets a high again, so he back up again. So that's what the Fed does when they inject right. liquidity into the system. So it's the same thing, but at some point, it gets too big, and who have to carry it is workers. But workers' income has not been increasing for a number of years. That their debt level is high, government debt level is high, so who can save who? Yeah. You understand? So the Fed keeps delaying the inevitable. What's saving America is that foreigners um, was used to buy America's debt, yeah. but now that's that, now that is reversing as well because of the whole um, issue with the oil. Oil is no longer priced only in dollars anymore. Right. They, they break that whole agreement now, and now they're accepting other currencies. So then there's a drop in uh, foreign purchase of American U.S. government bonds. Then is it? Yeah. So that has started to reduce as well. So China stopped buying them. Japan Japan stopped buy, stopped buying them to a certain extent as well because America was living on borrowed time. You know, it was convenient because after the Bretton Woods Agreement, where um, Nixon br uh, broke the 
um, gold standard yeah. where dollars was backed by gold. That was people, 73 somewhere there? 71. 71 yeah. yeah, people, you know, it was convenient because America had the whole um, payment system in place already, the SWIFT system or whatever. Right. So people knew that, you know, the dollar basically wouldn't be worth anything, but it's convenience, you know. We, who wants to build their own SWIFT system? Nobody wants to do that. Brick, Brick now is doing it. Now you have cryptocurrency is actually building their own payment system. Like the other day, I transferred to Europe via my, my crypto wallet. Yeah. Wallet to wallet, what, less than less than two, two three minutes. And I only paid three bucks. Whereas if I do it with the, the SWIFT system, I'd pay at least 74 guilders. Yeah, it's a That's big a difference. Huge though. difference, you know. So we have the technology now. So the question is now, what's going to happen? You and, know, and, and oil is no longer traded just in U.S. dollars. No, no they broke that. That's the, the scariest thing. That's the all. scariest thing. Because what was keeping America um, um, the dollar strong after they break the the gold standard was that oil had to be priced in dollars. In other words, if you want to buy oil, you need to first buy U.S. dollars if right. you didn't have it, and then buy oil. Now it's no longer the case. So, so what happens then? No, it's amazing because if you follow America with inflation and so forth, you know, the, the Fed just brought down interest rates by half a percentage yeah. point. It's like what you said earlier. Sugar just, rush again. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Huh? And at the same time, most economists are saying they need to see an increase in unemployment. Yeah. Now, the average man will say, why, you, why should the government want an increase in unemployment? Because then they, they feel then that the, the economy is not overheating anymore. Right, right. Which is kind of stupid because mm -hmm. people are, when unemployment, employment in the States is a bit tricky to, to gauge, right. eh? Because someone could be working two, three um, type of not regular jobs and they call that employment. But it's not structural, you see? And, and right. so you have to be careful when they're using these numbers. And the, the America kept changing the statistics, the statistics, it's a difficult word, um, over and over uh, again. Yeah. To, to you know to appease a certain agenda, and that's the that's the strange thing about America. And what make it even more dangerous is the political influence there. Correct. Now. Correct. You need to understand there's a small group, and I understand it huh? because look, there's a small group of powerful persons, and of course, asset values for them is the most important thing. And what influences asset values? Liquidity. When you pump liquidity into the system. The small man don't get, get liquidity. Huh? It usually goes to the banking sector. A small yeah. group gets that money. They pump it into the stock market, and the, and the asset values goes up. So you get speculation. So what drives the economy is speculation, for the most part. Huh? Because mm -hmm. you, can, you can get um, growth in four different ways. Speculation, exploitation, like how people in sweatshops in China, they hire mm -hmm. um, you know, um, young children to do stuff, and they don't pay them the value. Right. You know? And so there's three, four different ways. Only one way, though, is very um, important, which is efficiency. If you grow with, with true efficiency, technology and stuff like that, then it's good. But most economies don't grow like that. It's always exploitation, speculation, and so forth. The, I think that was America up until the, the 1980s, and everything really basically changed. Yeah, so America had truly a, a industrial type of endeavor back in the day, where capitalism was capitalism. But it evolved to creditism. And most people don't understand the shift. Creditism means now, um, loans and whatever is feeding the economy. Back in the day, it was hard work, right? Right. But then when the shift to creditism, right? People still think we're in capitalism, but it's not capitalism anymore. Capitalism was based on hard work, buying uh, equipment, and, and actually doing work. Yeah. Now is is the credit the credit and the debt now is, is feeding the whole whole society now. You know what's kind of scary is that I, I lived in America for a while, studied there, and when I look at America today, it's more and more becoming like a third world country. <laughs> it's funny you say that, because the other day I read an article from Walmart. Mm. <laughs> Walmart had to stop, start locking up basic, basic stuff. So now to get anything, they got to go with a key yeah, to get a and, key. and open up. And I had an economist now, he lives in, in Colombia now, and he said in Colombia, they don't, that's, that's, Colombia is a so-called third world country, but we don't have that in Colombia, mm. where they're locking up basic stuff that people have to, you know? Imagine you gotta go get um, a headache tablets and they got it locked up, got people teeth and headache. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy, that's, that's America. America is turning like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 but it's sad because yeah. it's a country that I really love. I think a country that really helped a lot of countries in, in the world too. Mm -hmm. And to see how Americans are today, you know, it's, it's really, really sad, man. But again, history. That's why the school system would teach us proper history. Mm -hmm and teach us real um, learning, we'll be critical thinkers. For example, before America was uh, uh, the um, reserve currency of the world, who was it before? British, right. right? The British pound. Before the British pound, most people don't know that the Dutch guilder used to be the reserve currency of the world. Prior to the Dutch, it was the Spanish, 
and I could go all and on and on. So America is due for a reset. So who's going to be next? Which currency can be next? Yeah. You see, and this people don't understand. It always happens in history over, over and over again. And what we notice, the same things that happen that cause the demise of the, of the reserve currency of that country happens over and over again. America right now is, is, is mimicking those same traits. Debt levels are too high. The velocity of money, so money changing hands mm -hmm. over and over is dropping, right? You, you have, um, um, you know, the, the treasury issue, that like people are not buying the treasury anymore. Well, so the yeah. number of things that's happening, mm -hmm. the debt to, to GDP level is going really, really high. It was over 100? Over 100 now, yeah, exactly. Whoa. So all those same patterns yeah. that happened with the British, the Dutch, or whatever, you've seen it happen now with America. So what I tell you, history always seems to repeat. So they have this huge debt, what, 32, 33 billion, a trillion, 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 trillion. plus they, yeah. they are, there have been many wars in the, yeah. in the last, what, uh, 25 exactly. years. Yeah, wars is one of them as well. Yeah. But what people don't realize, the tertiary debt is only the national debt. But America also has something called unfunded liabilities, right? That's the Medicaid and all those things. So that's, that's not on the books. Those are contingent liabilities. I mean, they're off the books. So when you add those components now to the 33 trillion, mm. it's mind-boggling. Wow. It's mind-boggling. But some people feel like, yeah, debt is not important. Every country should have debt to move on. It's good until um, uh, if, if, if all other countries accept it, then America don't have a problem. But BRICS now is, is and you have to look at what BRICS is doing. Huh? They're not moving in, in fast increments. And that's why people have recency bias. They don't understand how things is moving marginal. Yeah. Marginal, they move in very small stages. And, and the BRICS are really doing something. Huh? The latest thing I heard with the BRICS, they'd already make their payment system, like the SWIFT, right. and they tested it already, and it works perfect. So it, it, they're gradually doing what they have to do. You understand? And so when you sit down here thinking that it won't happen, by the time it come upon you, it's going to be too late for you to do anything. And these are big countries, yeah. China, yeah. India, Brazil, mm -hmm. Russia. A lot more are joining as well. Oh, right? yeah. And you have to understand people, uh, people's emotions with a rush. When people see a group of people doing something, there's rushing all at once. So even those who were staying out at the bricks, you know, they're kind right. of like, contem you know, like hesitating. As soon as they see more and more join, it's like a herd mentality. All of them will start to join, and then that's when the exponential growth is going to go in. If, you're, if, you're, if you didn't prepare before that happens, mm -hmm you're in trouble. Wow. It, it's, we live in a, a very uh, strange and scary world now with yeah. wars all over and uncertainty. And I think uh, most people say the best thing to have now is gold. Do you believe that? Well, to be honest, um, gold was not nowhere near the first two uh, reserves. Huh? Do mm -hmm. The dollar still is for now. Yeah. Um, the, the, the gold took over the euro as the second reserve. Mm. That means central bankers and whatever are buying up gold like crazy, so much so that the gold has replaced the euro. And that's scary. Well, See? wait a minute there. You tell me that central bankers are buying up gold? Yeah. The central bank of Curacao and St. Martin sold 25% of the gold reserve. Yeah, I was always against that. And I told the former minister of finance, I don't agree with that. And I was, yeah. I was surprised. Yeah. But you see, the thing is, you have to understand, you have to understand why though, right? Now, I understand why, even though I don't agree with it. Um, gold doesn't generate interest, right? It's just a hedge against inflation. Right. So if you have to buy gold, if you, if you have to continue buying gold back in the, in the years, right? If you have to quote the price of a home in gold today, you actually pay less in gold mm. uh, today than you had to pay back in the day. And people don't understand that because of inflation. So gold is a natural hedge against the, the cost of living going up. But it doesn't necessarily generate a like a treasury, a treasury bond, right. right? So what they did, the central bank did, is they, they sell gold to buy tre U.S. treasuries. To generate a return, they're able to put that return on the books. Part of it wasn't also to pay dividends to... Um... Well, you could pay the dividends from the treasury yeah. return, right? But my problem is if, if, if debt or uh, money mm -hmm. is being eroded, the value, the personal power is right. being eroded, what goes to the treasury, right? The treasury would have to give you at least five, six, seven percent to compensate for, for that inflation. So that was contrary to what you said a while ago, then the, the, the other European banks buying gold and we are selling. Yeah, because the reason why they, they prefer to hold and don't sell, mm. they know, they've seen that the dollar, remember the dollar was is number one. Right. But they've seen that the dollar is eroding, right? And, and, and they don't know what's gonna happen, so they prefer to hold, um, instead of to hold the treasuries, they prefer right. to hold um, gold instead. Right. Yeah. Wow, you know, it's amazing, the little man never gets away. He always gets squeezed.
Unfortunately, we, we built a system in such a way that mm. um, only the, the persons who are paying attention mm. and uh, understand it is the ones who could mitigate the risk. Small man is too busy trying to put food on the table for the next day. He don't have the time to sit down and think uh, on the stuff, for example, like you know, mm -hmm. a small group of people think about. You know? But you have to look at the trends. If you look at Bill Gates buying up farmland, why are you buying up farmland? Yeah. Right? Then you're seeing the rich now building bunkers. Why, why, are, you being, why are you building bunkers? Well, Mark Zuckerberg, a bunch of the rich people are building mm -hmm. bunkers. Storing the food and everything for right. years. Yeah. Exactly. Why? Yeah. They, they know something we don't know. Mm -hmm. You understand? Because they also know history, you know, and the transition. Yeah. I only might say that history repeats and the reserve currency changes or whatever, but I don't. I didn't tell you what happens prior to that. Yeah. It's pure chaos, huh? There's always chaos before transition. The question is, can you withstand the chaos? And a lot of people get killed during transitions, huh? Yeah. And I think the rich know that, so that's why they're doing a lot of stuff they're doing. Well, in case you've just joined us, this is Speaking of Barrow Time, Oral Gibbs here speaking with uh, Mr. Emilio Calamero on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio. You know, it's amazing because when you walked in, you were speaking also about um, GBE, mm -hmm. and then you mentioned that you wrote a article. Yeah, yeah. some I, years back. Yeah, yeah uh, let me see. Let me see if we have it, because this is a long time ago. This was in February 2010, I wrote this article. Wow. It, it name is GB Ultimately to be Blamed. And the conclusion was actually no, you understand? Mm. And it was so funny because I wrote it in Samaritan, Samaritan Island time. Yeah. And the, at the beginning was this, it says, breaking news, the Samaritan Chamber of Commerce and Industry will take legal action against GB. The chamber who will be representing the business community of Samaritan uh, will be present in court on the 8th of March, 2010, seeking compensation for damages resulting from the numerous power outages that the community of Samaritan had had faced over the past months. This is nothing new. This is 2010. What are we happening now? It's basically the same thing on a bigger scale. In 2024. Huh? Yeah. Is that? 14 so, years later. Yeah. And I wrote an article about it. If anyone read that article, they, they, it would blow their mind how I predicted what's going to happen. This is a, a complete meltdown right now, yeah. basically. Yeah. It's scary. It and, is scary. And what is sad about it is that GB is posting um, load shedding schedules. Yeah. And then the, we are here and since we're now at the station. Yeah. And what they will do is they will post outages after <laughs> the low has started. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And I have proof of it. And you know, and they've destroyed so much of my equipment. Yeah. And it's just unfortunate because we are a small business yeah. and there's very little we can do mm -hmm. about it. But to see what's happening, how this is affecting the entire island, Correct. I, entire Dutch side yeah. of it. It's it's very um, scary. Yeah, and and who you know other countries have consumer protection agencies that has a body, independent body that can tackle these things and yeah. compensation will be given to uh, small people. But we were supposed to have a consumer protection here, but you know what happened after that? It was never funded properly yeah. uh, for obviously re reasons, I guess. You know, and so we don't have that protection. So you're on your own basically when it comes to mm -hmm. this. I think too because we have tribal politics here and the mm -hmm. culture of government and how it operates mm -hmm. always thrive on confusion yeah and um, we don't want things to be well structured and organized because then that will take away from the profits of those who want to use uh, um, confusion to yeah. benefit and yeah. in, if, if you look in any society mm -hmm. well organized societies involve more people benefiting when there's confusion there's only a small class yeah. And I agree with you, but the other day, right now I'm doing a class on behalf of government um, between Barbados. Yeah. Um, and so it's called basically uh, disaster risk financing mm -hmm. for small development states. The first two sessions that we did was an eye opener. For example, we just had a, we had a hurricane that mashed up, I think, Kanun and, and Karuku or whatever, right. flat, right? Most homes are flat. And the lady posed something on the, on, in the presentation. She says, I think it was months. Rachi had posted so one of the islands down there that the, the damage is 400 and some percent of their GDP. Wow. So I asked, so you know me, I bowl. <laughs> I asked the lady, but um, how, how in the world this island or whatever will ever recover from that? They already have debt, right? Mm -hmm. Besides the 400 percent of the damage done mm -hmm. in terms of GDP, they also have normal debt or whatever. Right. You add that to that pile, right? It can take them more than 20, 30 years before they can ever recover. She said, that's true. 
You understand? And so people don't understand the climate, the climate issues is one problem. Eh? That's a huge problem that's happening. Then you have the problem where uh, birth rates becoming a problem. Right. right. So birth rates is such a problem that countries now, developed countries now, are coming to your island to thief your people. Look what happened with Canada. Canada thiefing Jamaican people like crazy now to go, go work in Canada, right? So what's going to happen now? We're not doing what we got to do. People, like my, I have a stepbrother. He's leaving with his wife to go to Bermuda. I asked him, but why are you doing that? He said, as expensive as Bermuda is, he said, they too have a job in St. Martin and can't afford St. Martin. Right? So what's going to happen when you get these countries now taking your best and brightest minds because they don't have, right? The Asian population over there is a problem for them, right? And they're enticing you to, I say thiefing, but I'm putting enticing. They're enticing you to come over there. What do you think will happen? You're going to lose your best and brightest mind. you got a brain drain. It's happening already, right? And that's, that's the other situation, right? Mm -hmm. So you have all these accumulating factors, right, um, yeah. in terms of uh, energy, energy crisis, food crisis. How are we going to deal with all of them at the same time when they do occur? And no one sits down and, and decides, you know, let's get rid of the, the, the little stupid things we're doing now to focus on the real big problem that's coming. But, you know, we have more educated people now than we had 40 years ago. Something is wrong. Maybe they're not in the right place. And this is the problem. When I ask certain people, like when they ask me, why, should, why do I want to go in government? You know, for me, I don't, I don't see the need to go in government, right? Because you have certain persons that, that they don't think in a certain level, right? So they can frustrate me, right? For example, I was in a meeting at the time, and we talked about one of the government-owned companies, right? Um, so the individual was upset about uh, what the harbor did with the, with the bridge and whatever the case is. I said, by the end of the day, mm. right, regardless if they did that, if the harbor goes down, who do you belong to? You're 100% shareholder, right? So how are you, how you trying to isolate yourself from the harbor, but you own the harbor 100%? So you can't look at it like that. Mistakes is made in the past, mm. but then you have to recoup the mistakes. That's just the way it is. So why are you looking at things from a, 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 a small-minded perspective? You have to look at the bigger picture. Because the people at the top told them it's not like that. I had Brian Mango here, mm. CEO of the airport. Mm. The guy was talking fraud. You know? mm. Oh, the airport doesn't belong to the people of St. Martin. Because Who you belongs can't. to? It's really a lot of bull. Mm. You know? And when you hear that coming from those kind of people. Mm. And then, you ha then I had... Um, Cyril Westcott Williams, MP Westcott Williams, uh, a week after that. And she says, say on the show, but you know something? Brian was technically right. <laughs> it's a lot of bull. Okay, so if, if, the, if the harbor failed today, right, financially, the airport failed, tell them fail or whatever, you know, who's responsible for, for saving them? The government. The government have to exactly. save them. Exactly. Eh? As a matter of fact, they're part of the government financial statement, right? So the, the equity portion, whatever, is part of it. So you don't, you don't have a choice. And I think they make up 40 to 45% of the GDP of St. Martin. Exactly. So if they, if they fail, you have a serious problem on your hands. huh? So, you know, when you hear that coming from politicians mm. and CEOs of these government-owned companies, do you think the average man is hearing them yeah. and seeing them? Yeah. And then they come to believe it. But you're right, because when there's a problem, you and I have to bail them out. Yeah. And this is the... This is the attitude we have today among our so-called educated and those. That's why I said to you earlier, mm -hmm. we have more educated people now yeah. than we had 40 years ago. Why we have more problems now than we had 40 years ago? <laughs> it's like it's like one of the <laughs> economists says. He said, the more societies develop, the more you get a community crisis. Right? Uh -huh. This is an economist. And my grandmother, um, so my mother's mother, before she, yeah, my mother's mother, mother, I think, yeah, my great grandmother then, yeah. she told my mother when she was growing up, I wasn't seven in the picture then, she says, um, basically, when time changes, right. it's going to be a modern world really? and a modern hell. And, and so when I look at those two and I compare them, you know, the right. more the com a community develops, the more the community crisis. And then she says, that when I compare the two, I like my grandmother was on point. She was an economist without even knowing. Imagine that. Eh? Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. And you know, when you, when you look at St. Martin today, we're a very unique island. Mm -hmm. We have people from all over the world yeah. coming here. Yeah. And at the same time, we open our arms to these people. Yeah. But I see danger down the road. There's a similar, a sim a similar thing happening mm -hmm. in Canada. You have to manage your, your, your immigration coming in. What's happening in Canada, people would come in, um, they get part of the system, but they go and they mingle with their own people. And I, tell, I was telling Canada that's a wrong move. What you have to do is you have different places in Canada that doesn't have a lot of people. 
you send them there. If you want to become a Canadian, you have to stay in this area for five years. Uh -huh. Then you can move wherever you want. They don't do that, though. So yeah. what people do, they come in, in society, and they they stay in their cliques. Yeah. Same thing in St. Martin. They have some people I know living here for years, and they can't speak English. Yeah, that's true. How, 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 how is that possible? You see? And, and, and something is amazing. I said something back in, in way back in the day, and um, I talk about where some Martin see themselves in the future. And that, I was asking these questions in the past. Mm. You know, um, what is our goal? What is a similar? No, you know, ask all these questions. Hold that thought. Hold that. Yeah. Hold that thought. Please <laughs> hold that thought. <laughs> we gotta go to a break in case you just joined us. This is speaking about everything. My guest is Mr. Emilia Calmera. We're here on YouTube, Facebook, and Hot ninety nine point nine FM Radio. When we come back, we'll continue right here. My guest on the Speaking of Other Thing is Mr. Emilio Calamera. You're watching or you're listening to us on radio. So we are on Facebook, YouTube, and on Hot 99.9 FM radio. I, I ask you to hold that thought. I had to go to a break. So I got to come back to you now and yeah. what we were speaking about. Okay, so this is going to be tough because this was from the same article I wrote in 2009, right? Mm. Um, and basically I said there are two conflicting opinions in St. Martin. This is when I, this is back in the day. I said uh, people, some people say St. Martin is booming and some people say it's not booming, right? And I came to the conclusion both perspectives are correct. It depends who you ask, mm. right? So one of the problems I saw in St. Martin was numerous of problems. But then I said, okay, if you want to have an a, a island that has synergy, meaning everything works cohesively in a, in a cohesive way to get the future, right? You have to have that everyone is on the same pace when it comes to thinking, right? So some of the questions I had is, what is St. Martin's identity? That was one of the questions I asked, and I couldn't figure, I couldn't figure out the answer. I asked, how do we define a St. Martin? I couldn't get no answer on that. Is there such thing as a St. Martin? All right? These are questions I've been asking in the article. Huh? Um, one of the other things I asked is, what is our culture? You understand? We, we are a minority in our, in our country now, but what is, how do you define our culture? Um, where are we? What do we have? What do we want? How are we going to get it? You know, how do we obtain our goals? What is our goal? All these questions I ask. Eh? And most of the time, almost 100% of the time, I couldn't answer none of them. So then I saw back then already there's a problem because I explained where the future is going to go. Mm -hmm. And if you don't have a clear idea of what you want, where you're going to go, right. who you're doing things for, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, you're gonna get a serious problem down the line, and so said, so done. You understand? Yeah. We are the very uh, crucial crossroads in our history. Yeah. Where you know, almost eighty percent or eighty-five percent of the young people I speak with, mm -hmm. their biggest concern is that they can't afford to purchase or build a home. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And but they see other people doing it. Yeah. Yeah. And if that continues, um, and you have well-educated Samaritans now mm -hmm. who can't afford mm -hmm. a home. Like you mentioned, your stepbrother yeah, is right. educated, but they have to leave. Have to leave, yeah. That, that's not a good friend. No. It's actually happening more and more. Like uh, in the last, I would say, last couple of months, you know, I've handled advices within government where a lot of young professionals leave in government. You know, some going back to Caruso, you know, some going back to Holland, et cetera, et cetera. Even my business partner uh, decided to leave to go back to Holland. And uh, within less than a year, she was able to buy a house in Holland because, you know, okay. we, we invested together and, you know, she had the knowledge of investments and so she was, I was mm -hmm. insisting on to invest, so she saved up a good bit. So she had a good bit of money to put in when she went to Holland. And most people were jealous of her, like, how are you coming from St. Martin, for example, and how are you able to buy a house and we can't buy in a house? Because she had financial discipline, mm -hmm. you know. Anyone who sticks close to me and gravitates towards me, it, it, there has to be a financial synergy. Because I'm going to teach you why I know, mm -hmm. and I, you know, if she already had certain traits already, and that's the only way you're going to make it. You know, you, you said something just a while ago. Mm -hmm. That's key. Yeah. You know what it was? No. Think. Mm -hmm. Financial discipline. Oh yeah, financial discipline. That's the key. Yeah, that's the key. Yeah. You know, 
people don't realize, you know, in the end, if you don't have that discipline, yeah. you could make a million dollars. That's right. And you're going to fail. Yeah. You yeah. know why? There's three, people don't like laws, but there's three laws when it comes to money, right? The first law of money is multiplication. Banks do that very well, right? And if you don't seek to do it as well, you're going to get wiped out because the multiplication aspect in the bank creates debt. Okay, so you have to be able to also have a savings component that's compounding as well. Right. So that's one. Number two is retention. So if I make a million dollars and I spend a million dollars, I have zero. If I make one thousand and I spend one dollar, I have more than the person who's a, who made a million exactly. because I was able to retain more. Right. The, the third law is diligence. How? Okay. So once I have the, the savings, what do I do with that savings to multiply it? So all the three laws are related. But if right. you don't apply those three laws, you're always gonna have a problem. Because financial discipline requires you to be able to retain money, right? Yeah. That's savings. And then investing now is the knowledge now, what do I invest in to be able to multiply the money? You see? And um, like you just described, I think that's a problem among many of our young people today. Yeah. You know, yeah. even those that are well-educated, yeah. they don't have that discipline. Well, I can understand why, yeah? I mean, if you look at how society has the advertising, the social media, mm. or whatever, whatever, that you're constantly bombarded every second, every day by purchase, 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 purchase. Because I remember that the, the world needs something called cyclical consumption in order for everything to survive. If you stop consuming as a consumer, the whole, the whole thing falls apart. Yeah. And one of the things I realized that um, I was able to reduce my costs tremendously by trying to do a lot of stuff myself. I cook more. I go to the farms more, wow, or whatever, nice. whatever. Uh, <laughs> and the cost went from, let's say let's say I was spending, I'm just saying something, let's say $2,000 a month, yeah. I got my cost down to $1,000 a month. But, but I don't know if it was you or someone told me on the show that if a lot of people was like me, they'll have problems. They'll so. have big problems, yeah. <laughs> so, so that's why I don't want everybody to be like me. <laughs> Somebody has to support the economy, or Somebody has to support the economy. Yeah. So, you know what yeah. yeah. Because, for example, me, I don't buy no new car. If you, if you go right outside now and see my Jeep, my Jeep is in the dire straits. It needs paint or whatever, but that gets me from point A to, and I could buy a brand new car tomorrow yeah. <laughs> without a bank loan. Is that? But for me, it, it's just it's just a, a end to a means, you know what I mean? Yeah. I have other things doing. That's more important than a car. Do, do, do people come to you for advice and so forth? Oftentimes they do, but the, the discipline part is not there. And okay. the problem with me, you, you come to advice of somebody all you want, but the discipline is so important when it comes to financial management that if you don't have the discipline, it just don't make, it don't make any sense. Uh, the reason I ask, so many people tell mm -hmm. me about you when they see you on this program, yeah. you know, and, they, and they love to see and hear you, and that, that's why I ask that question. No, but see, it, it requires sacrifice. Uh -huh. you know, discipline, financial discipline requires sat sacrifice. In other words, self-gratification has to go to the wayside. And oftentimes, it's very hard. I ain't gonna lie to you. Um, it's the same thing with me. I love travel, you know. Mm -hmm. I love flying or whatever. Yeah. But if I if I had to go do uh, training in a, an aircraft every time or whatever, I'd be broke, because it's like two three hundred dollars or what to fly expensive. now. Yeah. It's very expensive. So d despite I love it, right? For me to get my goals in place, I have to sacrifice that for for a while. And once I get to where I go, where I want to go, that can become you know what I mean easy for because the, the investments could pay for that. You see, exactly. so it's a way of thinking that you have to kind of apply it in your life. It has to become part of you. If it's not part of you, it's not going to happen. You know, I don't remember telling you this before because we spoke so often. Yeah. Um, I was told by someone who was a credit officer mm -hmm. that the biggest problem for local people uh, not getting credit was because of a car loan. Yeah, debts. Um, as a matter of fact, <laughs> when I was, was a working housing foundation, right, they had a lady came in. She was making like 10000 I think it was, no, it was 10, no, I love oh. over 11,000 gillers a month. So actually, at that point, she was making more than me. Huh? Yeah. However, when I did a pre-calculation, I asked, okay, so this is the, the, the amount of money here, right. but I noticed you have a car loan, island finance loan, and she had like three different personal loans. So now when I took the amount of money per month and subtracted from that mm -hmm. and then worked backwards to see what she can afford, she could, not she could only afford, I think, a $120,000 home. So I told her, if you didn't have these loans, you could actually afford $350,000 loan. She said, what? I said, just by, have, just by having a car loan, island finance, the payments for those three mm -hmm. things are affecting your ability to borrow in order to buy a house. And she wow. said, oh my God, no one never told me that. I'm gonna work at paying off these personal loans yeah. right away. But the problem is, if everyone was disciplined, 
what will happen to the banks? We have a number of banks in Ireland. No? We don't have one or two banks. So if everyone had financial discipline, the question would be, would what would happen with the banks? Uh -huh. You need to understand everything is a balance again, right? Right, right. So um, for one person to survive, our next one have to go in debt or succumb. It's like a vulture system. A system is a vulture system, yeah. right? In school, the same way. You only could, you could only could pass by um, always having correct answers, right? An entrepreneur has to fail in order to learn. And a school system, if you, if you get the marks incorrect, you fail. You see, this is a whole different way of thinking. You know, if you, if you look at it also like this, in a way that the working class would put the money in the bank mm -hmm. to save, get zero point whatever percent. Correct. The bank takes that money and, and multiplies it. Yeah, no, it, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, that's why I tell you the first law of money is multiplication. So I don't blame banks. Banks and, and rich people multiply money, right? So if you put your money in a, in, a, in, a, in a savings in a bank and you're not multiplying it, okay, then you have a problem. 14.97% uh, return on investment doubles your money every five years, right? Yeah. Doubles it, okay? So, so if you get in zero point, what, what, less than one percent? Yeah. What are you busy with? Because remember, debt also creates inflation. People don't understand that debt is a two-edged sword. Huh? It causes also inflation because today debt and money is the same thing. Yeah. Right. The more money there is, the more debt it is. If you look, if you look at the charts, the chart will show you that the money supply and the debt curves are the same thing. So the more money there is, the more debt there is. So if you put money in a bank and you're not getting at least four percent, then what are you doing? What are you busy with? What are you busy with? And it's the same thing you can't do without the banks. They're so central to the world today. Well, anyway. well that's, that's because the central bankers, of course, um, influences yeah. that as well. Because look, there's a lot more benefits out there with like platforms like Revolut, right. uh, Kraken or whatever. But what happens? Those get blocked. Right. Right? Revolut was, was systematically blocked from St. Martin because banks was complaining. Right, because most people would take the, the salary and that's send it to the Revolut, and Revolut could do so many things. I'm gonna lie, Revolut is amazing. They, they protested against it, eh? yeah, of course. Yeah. They, but they never, they never, they never protested against Wise, though, because Wise also allow you to have accounts in St. Martin, hmm. but they would never tackle Wise. Wise is a, a similar platform like Revolut, but from England, okay. But Wise services is jokey in comparison to Revolut, but they would never tackle Wise because Wise is not a threat, Revolut was a threat. So every time we feel threatened, we have a problem. The mm -hmm. only question is now, what's going to happen now when crypto get, goes mainstream? Because I could have a wallet on my phone. Mm -hmm. You can have a wallet on your phone. I, all I need to know is the address. Yeah. And once I get the address, I put it in, it goes right away. But and you could be anywhere in the world. A lot of governments are is against it. Yeah, but a lot of governments are for it too. Bahamas already have crypto legislation. Huh? Mm -hmm. We're behind, we behind the curve. Huh? Um, Dominica adopted Tron, the Tron cryptocurrency. And Tron is very stable. I've never seen a, a, a so-called non-mainstream uh, cryptocurrency stay mm. so stable yet, you see? And I use the Tron network to actually wire funds to Europe, very stable. So remember, internet, the adoption rate of internet was very low when it came out, right. very, very low. And cryptocurrency adoption rate is still faster than the internet. So it's just a matter of time. Huh? It's amazing. Huh? Yeah. It, you know, at the same time, central banks want to be able to control. But they have to. That's the reason why they come up with CBDCs. They realize I can't stop crypto. That train done left the station already. We try, we try to block Ripple, uh -huh. we try to block that, ain't happening. Bitcoin done on the next league already. So they yeah. can't stop it. So we say, you know what? Before we get left out, <laughs> left out and become irrelevant, <laughs> let's start to tackle CDBCs. But there's a problem with the CBDCs. CDBCs uh -huh. are central bank digital currencies. So basically they, work, they create their own sort of blockchain or whatever mm -hmm. to kind of compete with the, the ones that's there already. But their own is more private because of course, um, the, always, the always that we have is open. You know, anyone can get access to it. And but the, there's a fear that um, governments will shut down the open ones and to it's, control. Then you have to. How do you set, how do you shut down? Remember, cryptos on a, on different networks, like like for example, Bitcoin. For me to get part of the Bitcoin network, I just need to buy the equipment, mm -hmm. download the software, upload it, and I come part of the network. And if I solve some of the puzzle, I get a reward in terms of in the Bitcoin. Right. Anyone could do it. Right, if you have money, then because remember, those, the equipment is not cheap. Yeah. Right, but if you have money, you can plug into the network. So how do you stop everyone from plugging into the network? How do you stop that? 
You know, it's very difficult to stop it. As, as if they didn't stop Bitcoin way back then, they can't stop it now. So it's too far gone now. Too far too. gone. The train then left the station. Yeah, yeah. So in order, so in order not, in order for it, they know they can't stop it, so they have to compete against it. But the problem is, how do you compete fully against against it? You have to then. Can remember the, the, the central bank digital currencies? They can control you, huh? right? If, if they say, look, I don't want uh, Mr. Gibbs to go buy a certain thing down by the shop, program it, boom, boom, block you. It's that, that's why I was saying yeah. that the, the fear no. among a lot of people is no. that that's going to happen down the road. But you see, the, the, the thing was what a lot of, and this is something that I, I, I sad to say, Oral, but most people do not think of something called unintended consequences. When you make a move here, remember, entropy is always in every equation. Entropy is chaos. People don't realize that if you go in space, it's very chaotic. Earth is actually also chaotic, huh? But the reason why we don't see it is because we have the sea, we have this, so everything right. keeps at bay. But as soon as you move things out of, the, out of the way they were, you cause entropy flaring up. So if you make one move here, you're going to cause another move here, which you might not know what it is. Right. So, that, so when you make a move like that, you're actually going to force people, because people are very rebellious by my nature. When you're going to tell me, oh, I, I, I can't do this and can't do that, who, who the hell is you? I wasn't into crypto then, but now I'm going oh. to crypto. Just because I want to be rebellious. Yeah. That's what's going to happen. So you're going you to cause unintended consequences to happen. But think about what happened with COVID how, and how governments around the world limited people's freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And that's why uh, when you listen to some economists, they're not even telling you to diversify. They say you can diversify within uh, financial assets. Right. But they recommend also buy properties in places that you could run. <laughs> when <laughs> when things happen. And the beauty of crypto, huh. you got your property wherever. It could be Colombia, I don't care where it is, right? Wherever where you are, it's with you. Right. Yeah. You just have a little ledger on you, and you could, right? You can't do that when you have money in the bank. Yeah. So if you have money in the bank and it frees the bank, you can get to no money there. No. Self-custody is important in these times. Huh? Yeah. Self-custody means that you always have the money with you. Cash is dangerous. Because with crypto, if you steal my crypto ledger and you don't have the, the codes, you can't get it. You can't get it. Yeah. But I, if I have the code, I can just buy a next ledger and re thing it, and I get back my money right on my ledger. You see? Yeah. And I, but you know, when you look at what's happening in the world mm -hmm. and you read the Bible, yeah. it's like it's playing out. Everything is just happening. It's playing out. And I'll tell you something that blew my mind in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And this was not even brought to me by a preacher, it was brought to me by a legal mind, right? A, a, a lady named Ellen Brown. She says, in uh, Ecclesiastes, I think it was, she says they had a debt jubilee. What was the importance of debt jubilee, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't really pick up on it. She said every 49 something years, the debt had to reset. You had to forgive their debts. And I said, but why would you do that? Because you cannot have debts growing exponentially. At some point, you have to reset it and start over. And when she explained the implications of that, mm -hmm. I was like, what? Well, but schools don't tell me that. When, when, when uh -oh. Europeans, um, Greece get into the problem, what do they do? They ain't forgiving them the debts now. They refinancing the debt. Yeah. So from one debt to the next debt, right? Why don't forgive them the debt? Same thing with Sir Martin. We got a huge amount of debt. If Holland don't write off those debt, there's no way we're going to be able to survive, especially with climate change issues, mm -hmm. right, that's coming upon us, right? There's no way we could survive. That's one element. Then there was a, another element where a Sabbath year for the, for the land. The land had to rest for one Sabbath year to replenish and, and get back his uh, vitality or whatever. Do we do that? The day we have to do a, a, a year jubilee for the land, the whole society will crash. Because everything is about making money every day, every day, every day. Plundering the land, plundering the land, yeah. with the land resting. So you can see scripture was right there for us already now. We have everything in there to tell us how we're supposed to live. But we choose to do the, the opposite. And I realized too, it, it also goes with our own bodies. Yeah. Independent fast. Of course. It's amazing. Yeah. As a little boy growing up, I see my mother fasting, you know, on a Sunday, and yeah. I was like, "What's this all about?" Yeah. Now that I'm older, mm -hmm. and you're hearing doctors saying you gotta go on a fast because it gives your body a chance. Exactly, to... amazing. And when I do it, yeah. there's something with my skin. Oh, you do it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's difficult, huh? Because like sometimes I couldn't get a day, a two in, <laughs> uh, right? And I just drink water or whatever. But yeah. it can be very difficult. Yeah. But if you, if you could get you a good bit of time fasting, your whole skin changes. You get, you get like a vibrant color on your face, you, you know, all that stuff. And it's amazing what it does. Yeah. You know, it, it, your organs get time to regenerate. It's, it's so amazing. So it's, everything needs that time, right? Yeah. yeah. But, you know, 
listening to you and looking at Simrat, and you know, I I love Simrat. This mm -hmm. way I was born, you know, and I I I feel so sad because mm -hmm. I want to be as optimistic as possible, but what I've said this before, and I think I've said it also with you and other people here. The future is bright mm -hmm. for Sir Martin, but not for Sir Martin people. That's correct. And, and that's, that's the reality you have to face. Huh? Mm -hmm. um, one of the reasons why I, I, if I think Sir Martin could have been saved, or it could be what I would love it to be, I would have fight more and, and, and decide to stick around. Be because I, I couldn't visualize it. Remember, I'm, I'm a person that look at trends. Right. right. I study history, look at trends and whatever, and I look at Sir Martin in the same way how I look at any other country. Uh, and, and because I don't see um, what I need to see to make me feel comfortable to stay is why I made plans from a long time to leave. And those plans just got, uh, I, I, as a matter of fact, I want to speed up those plans. Yeah, because I, I think a crash can happen that's going to affect us so badly that you need to understand that when people have no food to eat, et cetera, et cetera, they become different type of people. Huh? <laughs> they become people that you won't recognize. And that's what I'm yeah. scared of. And it's inevitable. It's inevitable. You see, yeah. if you look at the Caribbean, yeah. you look at what happened in Curaçao, mm -hmm. Aruba, yeah. the Dominican Republic, all these places prospered during a period of time. Mm -hmm. We're no different. Yeah. Old time is coming. Yeah. Yeah. It's just when. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. I mean, remember, if you don't have a, if you don't have, if you don't create balance in societies, yeah. it doesn't matter what you do actually. And right now, some man is imbalanced. It's, it's hugely imbalanced. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's always a pleasure having you here, man. Anything yeah. else you want to add in closing that I didn't ask you or you? Well, look, some people say they love St. Martin, and of course, you know, I love St. Martin to a degree. Um, I'm not going to, like the Titanic. <laughs> I'm not planning to stay on the Titanic while... While it's going out. No, 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 no. I'm not planning to do that because why? I, I've been warning. As you can see, 2009, I started warning. 2010, 11. Two, I was warning. Yeah. And because I see no one is, is playing heed, and, and to see that what I was warning about coming to play today, it only lets me to know what's, com what's mm -hmm. coming, you know what I mean? So why would I stick around to, 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 to have to deal with that? Yeah. I understand. You know, I, I came to the conclusion that I love St. Martin, but St. Martin don't love me. <laughs> 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 the reason why I laugh is like, I mean, is that like having a woman? <laughs> and my woman tell me, boy, I, I really love you, you know. But I, I stick it around. I mean, why stick it around? You say you don't love me. <laughs> so why stick it around? You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah. I mean, you, you're younger still. Yeah. You can move. I just got to stick it. Take yeah, 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 I hear you. Yeah, we're in different boats because <laughs> right. remember, I never invested in Samaritan. Yeah, in terms I, of, I, my properties are off island. Everything is off island, so it's, it's a different thing. So I, right, I get you. Right. I just I just a joke, but <laughs> I get what you're saying. Cause most people have, I know, I know some people have vested interests here. Yeah. And you just can't pack up and leave your thing unless it gets so dire that you have to run and leave right. or whatever. But I still tell people in those boats, try to still diversify outside of St. Martin. Whether it's buying a property or, or, or a real estate outside or whatever, right. you always need some place to run to in the event of something happening that you, you know what I mean? You always need that. You saw like sovereign man. Well, you got to be, think local, be global. That's, that's, the, that's what I always say. Think local, be global. Have a plan B, have a second passport. Exactly. <laughs> Most people are doing that. Yeah. 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 And they offer, they offer that in, in countries like Belize and so forth? So Belize is a beautiful thing. If you part of CARICOM, which we're mm. not, we could never be because we're not a, a you know, we, we, we're not like a um, sovereign, sovereign yeah. country. Um, so, but if you're part of Belize, mm. sorry, if you're part of CARICOM, you can go into Belize and work like anything else because Belize is part of CARICOM. But so freedom of movement yeah. is not an issue. But we can be like associate member like and so forth. Yeah, but they don't, they don't give the associate members the same, oh. all the same benefits like the, the full members. Belize do, do have a, a retiree program at the age of, once you're age of 45, and you can mm. prove that you're getting $2,000 a month from wherever, whether it's investments or whatever. Yeah. They have a retiree program starting from the age of 45. You can apply so, for it. So also for your children or whatever, and you become eventually a, a Belizean, and then after five years, you can apply to become like a, oh. yeah, so it's pretty good. Oh. Yeah. But thanks, man. No Always problem. great to have you here. Yeah. All right? Pleasure so, to be here. Uh, Mr. Emil Gamera, and that's it for now on Speaking of Everything on YouTube, Facebook, and on Hot 99.9 .9 FM Radio. See you next time. Take care. Bye.